What's the tallest you can build in Minecraft? 320 blocks, right? Wrong! Well, kinda. Since 1.18, that limit is more of a suggestion than a rule. So I changed the height limit to build as tall as I wanted to, which I then did. Over the last 15 months, I constructed a 500 block tall tower and I'm planning to build even higher in the future. This is probably the tallest survival base out there, at least I didn't find a taller one. It has 153 separate builds on the exterior, 42 farms in the interior and more rooms than I am bothered to count. If you want more details on the build process, you can watch the previous episodes. This is just a world tour. The video is split into the four following sections. As you can see, this will take some time, so we better get started. Here we have the entrance to the garden. This path leads to spawn. It isn't finished yet, but at some point I will continue this avenue all the way to spawn. On the other side we have the tower, I'll show it to you later, but first I'll show you the garden and to do that I have to get a little bit of height. The garden has several stages or levels. The first one is the circular hole in which the tower stands. It goes all the way down to Y11, which originally was where the bedrock um, existed. It changed in, I think it was version 1.18. So it no longer goes all the way to bedrock, but it's still deep enough for me. The second stage is this octagonal shape with beacons in each of the corners and pathways between the beacons. This essentially creates eight small hatch maces. They're all made from leaves and path blocks to prevent mobs from spawning. The paths themselves are made from sandstone slabs. Mobs can't spawn there either. The second stage is this circle. It's also filled with leaves in different patterns. I tried a little bit. I had some spirals, some hearts, there are some flowers. Here's a cross. And there are also these um, sandstone structures to give it a little bit of variety. It looked um, too samey otherwise. We also have four paths, each in well, one path leading to each of the four cardinal directions. This one leads east towards spawn. But there's also another path leading to the other direction. For the paths that don't lead to spawn, they all end in those villager angel statues. There technically is a beacon in there, but I'm too far away, so it isn't loaded. The one leading to spawn has those two copper spheres that shoot their beacons all the way into the sky. And it's really far up. And we also have other beacons at the at the corners, those are copper flames, they rust themselves, I don't pre-rust copper blocks, it takes too much time in my opinion. Okay, that was the circle, that were the paths and the beacons. The next element is this eight-pointed star that essentially surrounds the circle, I later will show you a map that makes it better, or I, I will insert a map right here, that's probably the best idea. So basically we have those eight pointed stars and um, one eight pointed star made up from two um, squares surrounding the circle and it essentially creates an octagon surrounding the circle and eight of those corners. Those corners again have a path in the middle and leaf patterns. The last stage or the last stage so far but I personally don't think that I will expand the garden much further is another circle surrounding everything and as you can see it essentially creates eight areas and unlike the other parts of the garden i didn't fill them with hedges and leaves but with custom biomes first one i created is this one this is the coral sea or that's what i called it at least i'll get a little bit closer to show it a little bit better to you one moment what I really like about this biome is the gradient. We have those warped walls, we have cyan wool and we have, I think it's prismarine and then sand. And that creates a great gradient. And I also incorporate the plants into this gradient. On those um, wart blocks I have seagrass and on the sand I have corals. And I think you can see it a little bit better on the other side because there's more water. Yeah, here you can beautifully see the patterns and the plants. I also added um, a little bit of sand and those prismarine rocks. They are pretty rugged, sh basically shaped by the waves and the wind. And I also placed those custom giant corals. They, I think they turned out quite well. But let's go back to the tower to get a little bit of height so I can show you the 
pattern in the middle of the biome. It's made from lapis lazuli. They are all made from valuable resources. This one from lapis lazuli that took quite a long time to collect. Um, I think I did it. I collected all the lapis lazuli in episode 25 or 26, which was when I tried a lot of mining techniques to gather diamonds, but I also gathered all the other valuable resources, so I decided to use them in this garden. This pattern is this um, yin and yang shape, or two fish circling each other. Okay, that was the first biome. The second one is this enchanted forest. It has an amethyst theme. In the middle we have a moon shape made from amethyst and gold. And on the sides we have those small amethyst canyons filled with amethyst crystals. I will get a little bit closer. This is best to show from um, from the ground. We have the amethyst that makes the beautiful amethyst sound when we walk on it. Surrounded is everything by moss. Those custom trees, it's in my opinion a great combination. Those diorite walls and the birch blocks with ilia leaves. I also added different plants to different sections of the biome. So we have the tulips here, we have the lily of the valley here, we have the berry bushes here, and we have the cornflowers there. In this area I placed basalt blocks and I think there are also, yes, there are also calcite blocks here, some taller flowers. Essentially every section has their own decoration and vegetation. Biome number three. The um, snow pillars, this is actually inspired by a real place, the Lena pillars in Siberia. Essentially I have those massive stone pillars that were shaped by the wind and the snow and they are surrounded by ice crystals and snowy trees and in the middle, I get a little bit closer so the beacon loads, we have this flower pattern made from iron. Yeah. There's also I think a frozen river here, yeah a small frozen river. It's really hard to see with all the mountains or the pillars and the trees around. Biome number four, that was at least regarding the time it took to build the easiest. That is the burn forest. I have a pattern made from coal in the middle, resembling, I don't know, a sun or a black hole. And around it is the burn forest. I used a lot of magma blocks, a lot of concrete powder to resemble ash, and then black stone ruins as well as Burn trees made from basalt and andesite. Here you can see one from up close. Here you can also see the angel statue from up close, this time with the beacon. Here we have the fifth biome. This was the one that took the longest to build. This one took me almost three hours. It's by far the most complex. It's the fairy tale biome. Essentially, I have moss and grass as the floor and then place gigantic flowers and mushrooms on top and below it I placed smaller flowers and mushroom as well as a lot of different leaves and that took so long but it turned out great one of the better biomes in my opinion. In the middle I have this compass shape made from redstone I will get a little bit closer it's especially pretty to see this biome up close in my opinion. You can see we have different mushrooms and flowers at the bottom and then those all custom mushrooms and flowers on top. You could get lost in here if it weren't so small but honestly building that on a larger scale would take even more time and honestly this is as much as I could build after that it would get boring figuring out uh, different kinds of mushrooms and flowers. The next biome is the orange desert made from red sand and orange concrete powder. I have those dripstone canyons inside. We have a little bit of uh, decoration. Here's a skeleton. There are some factors. And in the center I have an eight-pointed star. I should show it from a distance. Exactly. Here we have the eight-pointed star made from wax copper surrounded by the desert and the canyons. This is inspired by Kapfen's Hermitcraft Season 8 base. He built a gigantic canyon with dripstones and a massive desert. This is basically something similar but obviously on a much, much smaller scale. Directly beside it is the bee biome. This one consists of 
hexagons made from concrete and terracotta and they are all filled with different things. We have trees, we have fields, we have honey and various yellow blocks that would resemble honey or pollen or whatever. Basically yellow concrete powder, yellow concrete, yellow wool and yellow carpets. In the middle is this massive sun built from gold with the beacon inside. And I also have this small bee statue hovering over one of the hexagons. The last biome is the moss biome. In the center is this eight-pointed star made from emerald blocks. It kind of resembles the shape of the garden as a whole in some way. And it is surrounded by those terracotta structures, a little bit of stone, a little bit of water, and it's all covered in moss and various plants. I'll fly down quickly to give you a better view. Here we have small ponds with water and essentially all the green plants in the game. We have grass, we have tall grass, we have rib leaves, we have moss and we even have the glow berries. That was the garden, next part is the tower itself. Five hundred blocks in Minecraft is tall, but how tall is it exactly? Here's my base compared to other, more famous Minecraft builds. This also shows that while my base is taller, it isn't necessarily bigger. And for the exterior, I will just let the build speak for itself. And now let me show you the interior of the tower. So we enter to the front gate. This little oak house is the first uh, structure I've built in this world, basically. And once we have activated the drawbridge, we can use bow and arrow to retract 
the drawbridge. Little contraption I copied. So, now we are in the interior and we can start with the storage room. This is essentially the center of the base and it's the most basic storage room you can have, but it's very efficient in the, us in the usage of space. We have chests all around us filled with stuff and the idea here is that essentially once I have too much to fit it into one chest I will use shulker boxes. For example here is one shulker box filled with coal ore because I have way too much coal ore. Essentially everything can be stored here. I have an enchanting table at the top with a little box full of lapis lazuli. In the center I have all the crafting tools, there is an anvil, crafting table, ender chest, photography table, stone cutter loom and grindstone. I also have a furnace, a composter and a little brewing setup. So this is essentially the center of this entire operation and probably the room I use the most. Now let's turn left and we get to the elevators. Here we have one that leads down to the mine, this is the next one I will take. But there are also other elevators that lead to different levels. We have the, this one that leads to the... Well, I should start with the with the lowest one. That one is the, the first. It takes us to the farm control room. I, show, I will show it later. I will show all those rooms later. That one leads to the crystal cave. That one leads to the large smelter. And that one will lead to the sky lobby, which is currently the top of my tower. So let's get completely to the bottom. Well, not completely. There's technically another 60 blocks below but I haven't built anything there but this is the ground I have this gigantic hole that took long to dig and it is surrounded black wool black stones to give it a little bit of a look I wouldn't want the raw stone to stick out here at the bottom we have this fog effect with several layers of glass and in the center of course the tower Here at the bottom, that was originally my mining area, I think you can still see it if you go here. Yeah, you press this button, come to the mining area, essentially there are a bunch of tunnels where I mined a little bit. Uh, essentially, not a little bit, but a lot. So, that's the mining area. Now here to the basement. There's a little room to show off all the ores. I got all the variants. This one was really hard to find. There are also the amethysts and also all the blocks that can be crafted from those ores. We have a staircase that leads to the essentially the bottom of the world. I can also show you this hole. It also leads to the bottom, but there's nothing down there. This lever turns the beacons on and off. Currently they are off. Now they are on. That one hasn't loaded yet. Yeah, now they have loaded. But we don't need the beacons, so we can turn them off. Those chests are empty. I used them to test different mining techniques. Got um, tested seven different me different methods. The, the tunnel bore was quite good, but unless you're searching for diamonds or copper, the best method was the, the beacon mining method, where you use a chunk from 1.17 and then just mine at... Um, Y11 with a beacon, that's essentially the best mining method. Okay, let's take the stair. We have a little balcony, that whole tower has tons of balconies and ways to exit the building if you want to. Or enter the building with the elytra if you have one. Here we have a cantina, nothing special, there are tons of useless rooms. I don't even think I will show you everyone, but that's one of many. Here we have the map, I've already showed it to you during the garden section, but here you can again see it, we have the oops, tower in the center, hole, the octagon, large circle, two squares that form an eight-pointed star, and then the eight custom biomes to form an even larger circle. That's the way to spawn, well it doesn't get to spawn not even a fifth of the of the entire distance. Okay, behind this area is the slime farm. I've recently cleared it, which is because which is why that is essentially empty. But it also sometimes produces glow ink and because I don't need much glow ink, it essentially produces all the glow ink I could ever need. It's pretty empty because I've emptied it uh, just beforehand. 
So, um, the more empty rooms, uh, not empty but useless. And here we have that little indoor graveyard. This isn't a hardcore world, I've died a lot and for every death I added one small tombstone. And I have this lectern that essentially shows me what each tombstone or each kind of block represents because I've died from a lot of different things. So that area was full, so I expanded into this area. One spot is left, if I die two more times I have to build another room for it. So, here, this is the first farm we are going to see. This farm is for the stripped wood. I think I can show it to you because it's a really simple farm, at least simple to use. You press both mouse keys and you will automatically grow trees and automatically harvest the stripped logs. Well, that's this. If we go here, we also have this extremely complicated vine farm. It's not complicated at all, essentially just use shears to harvest vines and then put it in here. I don't use many vines, so I don't need anything more complicated. Here we have a little room for our dogs. I think uh, there should be four, but I only see f there should be five. I only see four. One, two. Oh, there are two in here. Okay, all five dogs are here. Here's a ladder that would bring us to the top, at least to the to the basement elevator and the shaft we fell through. If we take this stair, we have another balcony, another room, but this, that here is basically one of the contraptions I have built. This is a contraption I'm quite proud of. It is an automatic potion brewing machine. What you do is you choose a potion with this lectern, then you determine if you want to add glowstone or redstone, if you want to add gunpowder or if you want to add dragon's breath. They are automatically water bottles put in here, they get refilled from this barrel and if you press the button the machine will automatically brew the potion you selected. I can show you a little bit how it works. Okay, it's really hard to see from this point. But essentially depending on what you choose at the lectern, one of those pistons gets extended. This one here chooses the magma cube. So the signal of the button will power this dispenser, uh, well, this dropper, and will drop one. This is yes, one magma cream into brewing station, and therefore brew a potion of fire resistance. I think it might be better if I show it through this door. Oh, there's the ladder. Exactly, so here's the machine that chooses the right dropper and here we have the other droppers for redstone, glowstone, gunpowder and dragon's breath. That's the redstone for the tree farm I showed you. Okay, let's get down. That's the right one. And the potion. Oh, I just noticed you can't use glowstone on that potion. Um, didn't check for this. Okay, maybe in the next iteration of that contraption there will be a check to see if a potion is even possible. Because fire resistance and glowstone apparently doesn't work. Well, while, this, while this potion is brewing, I'll take the stairs to the next floor and show you another storage room. Here I have a little pool table, a very simple design with a sign and carpet. This is one of the storage rooms. So I have this basic storage room in the center where I store all the things I actually use, but sometimes I get so much of a resource that I essentially need more place to store it. And this storage room here is for stone and dirt. You probably have seen the garden and it was a lot of terraforming, so I got a lot of stone and if you can see all those barrels 
They're filled. They're filled completely. The bottom block here says what the barrels are filled with. This one is cobblestone. This one is deep slate. We have diorite, grass, more cobblestone and another a lot of dirt and more stone all filled. Here I have well, those empty shulker boxes. Here I have even more stone and cobblestone. Um, and here I have even more dirt and grass. And here I even have sand and well, a few other stones, but most of it is sand. This one is the armory. It is used to store arrows. I have a mob farm that produces a lot of them. And down here I have the output for the squid farm. Honestly, I think I should show you the squid farm from the outside for a moment. This is what the squid farm looks from the outside. It looks just like a squid. Essentially there's water inside. Squids spawn because it's in a river biome. They fall down onto the magma blocks and if you wait long enough they will touch them and, well, they will drop their items. It then collected in those hoppers here. Let's go back inside. Okay, back at the squid farm interior. Here are more chests with all the pink sacks I collected. And now let me go up, back through the armory, through this back room, through the storage room, through the staircase. We can take two more stairs and we are back at the ground floor. I have a cow, essentially just there to produce milk for cake. We have a pig that produces eggs. This is the output of the mob farm. This is a little contraption that helps me convert concrete or ores. Yeah, the elevators, I already showed those, and that's the storage room. So we're essentially done with the below ground section. Wait, there's one more chest I have to show. This one is where I store all the fireworks I use. It's almost empty. I have to craft new ones. Okay, let's continue and take the stairs. Up here we have the nether portal. This is basically my main entrance into the nether. I will show you the, the things I built in the nether later at the end of the video. And then we have here the stair upwards. This is the mob farm. I've currently turned it off because I've already more than enough items. And here we have a ladder leading to a few more rooms, but I don't have time to show absolutely everything. This is the map of the world. We are, we are here, that's um, the tower and the garden. I marked villages in yellow and villager outposts in red and then I have this ocean monument in cyan. There's also a farm here for the guardians. This is a small glow lichen farm. Oh, I can show it. It's super easy. You just have to harvest the lichen here and it's Filled with bone meal to replant it. Okay. It's a dragon egg. I placed it here because that was the height of the tower when I beat the dragon. Maybe later I will build a larger structure for the egg, but right now that suffices. Oh yeah, the, the 365 day cake after after I finished a one in-game year. I built a cake with a, with a candle. Sadly, you can't place more than one candle on that cake. Maybe they should, should change that. That would, a, would be a good suggestion, in my opinion. So, there's another farm. Would need a shear, but if we, if we break this root um, block, it creates another one. What do we have here? Right. Yeah, I have the horses. Um, I don't really have a real stable, maybe I will build one later. And here we have the output for the honey farm. The honey farm, oh right. Right, here's also the output for the chicken farm. I've never checked it, they built the farm and then never checked that box, but apparently it was working the whole time and has produced cooked chicken and feathers the whole time. But I never needed those resources, so I never checked the farm. Funny. Here we have the the bottles that are needed for the bee farm. The bees are currently not working, it's night. And if we go back here, we can continue upwards. There isn't much on this 
this area of the tower because behind behind these blocks is the mob farm it's it's turned off but it takes so much space so there aren't many large rooms in that area of the tower you go up and here we have the farm control room this is basically to control a bunch of farms that one's the iron farm that's the mob farm here down there we have the outputs here we have um well i have to show it these bone blocks are produced by the leftovers of all those farms they are essentially eight farms um here at the bottom i can turn them on and off i can't turn all of them on and off and here at the top i can choose whether i want to collect what it produces or not i have a sugarcane farm a kelp farm a melon farm pumpkin farm i Honestly only use the melons and the pumpkins because I can trade them for emeralds. The other farms I don't use much because I've already enough resources. The twisted vine farm, the weeping vine farm, the cactus farm and the mushroom farm and the mushroom farm is incredibly slow. That's basically everything it has produced since the farm is running, which is probably more than probably around probably around eight hundred in-game days or something around that number. Oh, no, it probably must be more. Yeah, it's probably almost 900 or 1000, so that farm uh, really slow. But everything that isn't used gets composted and turned into bone meal. I've already crafted some of it into bone meal blocks. This is the output for the wool farm, which is behind this wall. And this one is the output of all these farms. That's those are really simple farms. Essentially, they just use bone meal on a flower and and it duplicates it. Um, one moment. Here we have our dripstone farm. It automatically breaks the dripstone, plants more dripstone, and when you are finished, you press this button and all the dripstone gets, and uh, not dripstone, all the drip leaf gets collected. Mm. For this one, you have to use a shear. I don't have one at the moment. But these farms are also really simple, you just press it and it drops the berries. Uh, and as I said, everything gets collected here. Okay, that's for the iron farm, that's for the mob farm. Um, what is, else is here? There's the office. There's also a list of everything I've built on the exterior and for some reason it gives a redstone signal so it messes up the table. Okay, there are some more books. Those are the suggestions I've worked in. Here are the, all the farms and there are the contraptions I built, but uh, well, it's it's just another another list. I haven't built many contraptions. Uh, I've built some farms and yeah, I also added some suggestions from the comments. If you have any suggestions or questions, then you are free to use the comment section down below and well, leave a comment. This is the sheep farm. These one aren't sheared because the dispenser is probably empty. I have to... I probably would have to add new shears, but I have more than enough wool of every color. Or at least every color I need. So... I can also use this way to fill the bone meal into those dispensers. Basically the back areas behind the store and to for the upkeep of all those farms. So, here's the second cake for two in-game years. And here I have storage for all the wool because the storage room at the bottom of the base couldn't handle all that wool. I've sometimes even sugar boxes filled with wool because I just have so much. As I said, I have more wool than I would need at the moment. Uh, I don't think anything is here. No, here's nothing. So, let's continue. That's, that's another room with some technical stuff behind it. And then we go up here. here. I have a Ravenger, I captured one. You can see the remains of the nether portal through which I moved the Ravenger. Yeah, the elevators, they basically go from from uh, the ground level all the way to the sky lobby at the Y level 500. They go through the entire tower so far. And here I have a look into the cactus farm. This is the... <coughs> 
sea pickle farm, you simply hold the lever and it should produce sea pickles. Yes, it produces them. Perfect. Here's a little bed. There are doors leading to the outside essentially everywhere <laughs> whenever I want to leave or enter the tower at any height. And let's continue. Yeah, I have a ghast captured. Um, it's easier to see from the outside. Sadly, you have to put those iron bars between because otherwise it would simply attack you, which is really not nice. It would damage the garden, it could damage the tower. Well, what else is here? Right, the free in game years cake and the snow farm. It's essentially one of the simplest farms in the game. You only have to hold the left mouse button and it farms snow. What else is here? This is the cocoa bean farm. Produces large amount of cocoa beans using large amounts of bone meal. And we have a similar farm here for all the different seeds. And of course carrots and car um, carrots and potatoes. This is the basalt farm and here I have a guardian captured between the elevators. And this is essentially the level I <coughs> ended the last world to on for, for the 1000 day episode. So everything above that is new and the video is already pretty long so I should hurry. Um, not a farm, not a real farm, it's just an area where you can manually farm cocoa beans. This is for seeds and flowers, also a very simple farm, it doesn't even collect it automatically, you have to collect it yourself. I wonder, can cocoa beans be composted? Yes, they can. And here we have the nether boards farm. I didn't build anything complicated because the easiest way is simply to build a big field of nether boards and then harvest them whenever they are grown. So let's take the next day. I go to the next level of the base. There's a stone farm. There's a Fern farm, let me try it. Well, you have to switch between two, between both mouse buttons to use it. There's probably a more efficient way to farm fern, but uh, I never needed much fern, so I don't need a more efficient farm. Here we have beetroot. Next stair. That's a farm for seagrass. Here's a simple field for carrots. Let's take the next stair. There's a moss farm on top. Here's the, the output. I've collected uh, most of the moss for the moss biome outside. Here we have potato fields. Go up. This is the output for the bamboo farm. We have a wheat field. I don't have a real wheat farm. This is all I have. Maybe I should build one in the future. I'll put it on the to-do list. This is a, a very simple, very small dripstone farm. It doesn't produce much. I've emptied it <laughs> to build the dripstone biome. Um, well, the, the orange desert with the dripstone canyons. Yeah, the elevators again. The elevators are everywhere. And there's another door that leads outside. There are so many I, I won't even show you close to or not even close. Okay, this is the on and off button for the bamboo farm. It's currently turned off because the storage is full. And then we go up here into this beautiful crystal cave. In this area there is a... Uh, it's, it's hard to show. Well, I'll show it to you uh, in a moment. But this is essentially the Nether tree farm, the output gets here. I've collected everything so it's empty. And the bone meal goes into those dispensers. This is also where I can harvest chorus fruits and chorus plants. And here in the center I have a small drowned farm. It's really not big but I needed it to get one trident and I've gotten, I think I've already gotten three. 
So. Beautiful room. This is the, the, um, the earth cube from the outside. This is this crystal cave in the inside. One farm I want to show you here. Well, I've already showed you those, but yeah, I want to show you how it works. It's the better tree farm. So let's activate it and I'll show you how it works. Okay, I dug my way into the blast chamber and essentially it grows the trees down there. It essentially was inspired by a video from Tango Tech. He explained how to build the farm, but he didn't really show a tutorial, but he explained it well enough so I could essentially copy the idea. I'm not as good as he did though. But essentially it grows the nether trees, both variants, and then I let the TNT drop down and it breaks the blocks. They get into the water and are collected by hoppers. Now we're back into the crystal cave. Let's continue our way upwards. This is the, the beach area. This is also, or the way to the beach area. This is also where the blast chamber is. Here we have this beautiful beach. Also the elevators. Um, these holes in the bottom maybe aren't the best idea, but there was really no way to hide the, the elevator shafts in this beach. Okay. Let's go back and take a look at probably the most important farm I've built. Namely, the Shulker farm. You see everything is spawn proofed because the Shulkers shouldn't teleport anyway, so there aren't any exposed full blocks in this area of the tower. This is the Shulker farm, I used the tutorial by Dark. And it's essentially a shulker farm that works within just one dimension, so I don't have to mess with nether portals or anything of this way. And it produces more shulker shells than I would use. It's um, essentially overkill, but all the smaller farms would use um, nether portals and I try to avoid that. So, here we have the library with another enchanting setup that actually works. For the, the full level, we can enchant all the way to level 30 if we want to, but I don't need fortune on my axe. So let's continue. Wait one moment. I want to show you the ship. Probably already seen it from the outside, but here it's also very, very pretty. That, that took a long time to build. It was probably the, the most complex build, or at least uh, the build that took the longest to make in the survival world. As you can see, it's also spawn proofed everything. There's no interior because uh, like a shells could spawn there. So, but in this was difficult. So, I take the next staircase and I end up here. There are a few more rooms. Uh, well, there are a lot more rooms, but I don't have time to show everything. I only show the important stuff. And then we end up here in the mob exhibit. There are a few tricks I used to prevent those mobs from, use, uh, from moving. The first one is berry bushes. They avoid those because they would get injured. So they stay on their pedestals. Um, giving a mob a name with a name tag prevents them from despawning and so does giving them an item. This round already holds a uh, piece of rotten flesh, so it doesn't despawn. Okay, that was the Elder Guardian, which I've also enclosed in an enclosure. But I will show you that soon. The skeletons, you can give them a sword, and if you're lucky, they will take it. I think there's a 1 in 10 chance, and if they take the sword, they lose their bow and they can no longer attack you. This um, snow skeleton you get if you suffocate a ordinary skeleton in a block of powdered snow, so I did that to get this snow skeleton. And the widow skeleton has a sword by default. Those mobs here, they are encased in glass because they have ranged attacks, um, except for the enderman of course. And here's another trick. The enderman is encased within a one by one block. Standing on a slab, it can't teleport for whatever reason. I could be a bug, but it could be intended. So, this was the widow enclosure. It 
also was a Wither Rose farm. I've already cleared all the Wither Roses. Um, but the problem with that is first, it's incredibly loud and it adds this visual effect where everything becomes a little bit darker and the sky also becomes darker and I just didn't want that in my world the entire time. So I got rid of the Wither. I can place a, a new Wither if I want to, if I need Wither Roses. And I have a Wither Killing Sword with Strength Potions if I want to get rid of it. But it's pretty doable because the Wither can't really move if it's standing here. Okay. Let's continue. This is the Furnace Array. It's filled by a Lava Farm above. And down here we smelt everything we put, or everything we want to smelt in this minecart. And here's the output. And also the output for the buckets that are used by the lava farm. Next level is the mentioned lava farm. All you have to do is fill your entire inventory with buckets and then, or with anything, but there shouldn't be any empty slots in your inventory. And then you just take a bucket and press on this cauldron. And if the farm is activated, it currently isn't activated, you will collect lava and automatically drop it into this hopper into the smelting array. Oh, I just noticed this is a, a crimson nylium and warped nylium farm, but it doesn't work anymore because I now have the, the mining fatigue effect, so I should probably move that at some point. Here we have the this is a bow shooting range. One of the targets is very sensitive, so it's very easy to get the, the lamp to, to go on. And one of them is really unsensitive, so you have to hit a bullseye. I think in this one you have to hit a bullseye. Wait, I, I should do it from here. But that one's... That one should be the easier one to activate. Yeah, but that one is, is really hard. You have to hit a bullseye. That's... Always difficult, I'm not particularly good with the bow. How is this achieved? Well, we have the back room here, use a comparator and fill it with shovels. Here's the maximum amount of shovels. We need the maximum signal from here, which is the perfect bullseye to trigger the lamp. This is a beautiful window with flowers and moss. It's just below the space shuttle on the outside. But we focus on the inside. And here we have the four in-game year cake in the small banquet hall. But let's continue. A throne room was suggested by a comment. And here we have small pool area for relaxation. Here we have a mini golf course we use. No, there are four stages. Essentially you have to drop the snowball, go where the snowball lands, and then try to hit the pressure plate. So, we scored this one. There's also another course up here. This one is desert themed and there's a plains of forest themed course here. Okay, down here we have the redstone for a pretty big contraption in the level above, which I will show you now. Because above we have my favorite contraption, the diamond counter. Oh, that, that creeper shouldn't be here. That is probably the worst place for a creeper to be. So the creeper is gone. I don't have any diamonds at the moment, but if I had one, I could throw it in here. I'll be back in a second with some diamonds. I have returned with diamonds to show you the, the contraption. So let's put all the diamonds in. Okay, it works. But what it does is that it essentially spits out all the diamonds here. Well, that shouldn't happen. I don't want to collect them. They get collected, put 
into this chest and here on the side I have a display that counts the number of diamonds I've collected so far. Well, it's a thousand and eighty-nine. Pretty good. I can get rid of... I can't get rid of those because I have the mining fatigue effect. Hmm, I will fix this later. Now continue, there are more rooms, but here we have a dance floor with a parrot. Here we have a music disc, can put it in, activate the light show, and we have this beautiful bar area. And the parrot dances as well. But we have no time to waste, so we continue. Above the bar is a staircase that leads to the next level of the tower, more elevators. Behind the store is a music disc farm, I used this to get all the music discs. The creeper falls down from the creeper farm above, exactly, what perfect timing. The skeleton shoots at the creeper because it wants to hit the iron golem. And after 4 or 5 shots, the creeper drops a music disc. Get collect this one gets collected here. And if it's full, I essentially took all the music discs and placed them in those barrels. But I don't use the farm anymore because I have enough. More rooms, a lot more rooms. And we come to this area where I have a room full of cats. Those aren't all the cat variants. But with six cats, essentially enough. Maybe I will get all the other cat variants later. Maybe not. Probably not. I, I want to focus on other stuff. This is the output for the farm here. It's a three in one farm. If we, if we take the stair, this is a three in one farm. It's a tree farm, not a not small trip tree farm we have at the bottom, but a real tree farm that gets the full logs without the, um, with the bark still on it. That lever here is activates <coughs> the piston at the top to prevent the tall oak trees from from growing. That one activates the TNT duplicator. You can see it here. Should see it here. Yes, the TNT is duplicating. That one activates a stone farm. Well, they use the same TNT duplicator, this way I save space. And this one opens the door to a large concrete converter. I don't have any concrete to show you. But essentially we place a concrete powder here and it gets turned into concrete. Gets pushed down by those pistons, gets broken by the TNT, and then we can collect it in the collecting area below. Collection area. There's also one concrete essentially, was probably broken by the TNT I just used. Mm, what is here? Well, here's a small selection of plants, or a small exhibition of plants. Here's more storage for wood. I produced a lot, uh, I also used a lot, but at some point this was pretty much filled with wood after I used the farm for a long time. Let's take the next stair. <coughs> Two more animal enclosures. Here we have a fox. That apparently doesn't do much. Would you please do something? It's just staring at the wall. Okay. What's, um, what else is here? Here we have a pretty big door that leads outside. One of the hundred doors that lead outside. Here we have the farm again. It's another way to access it. And here are more animal enclosures. The mushroom cow in a mushroom themed enclosure and the goat in a mountain themed enclosure and I had to install this pretty tall fence because they otherwise would jump out. Both enclosures go over two stories for the mountain, makes a little bit more sense. Here I 
want to fit in some taller mushrooms. Let's continue. It's a small museum area. I have different kinds of stone, gravel, even dripstone. Snow and ice. And here I have the room with the, all the colors, all the colorful blocks in the game. Well, not all of them, but wool, concrete, terracotta and glass. Well, at least some of the colorful blocks in the game. Here's a bedroom. I have many bedrooms. This is one of them. I, they're all color themed, so this one is one in, in uh, pink. I have also bedrooms in most of the other colors. What do we have here? Right, this is one way to access the parkour course. Um, this is the Eva themed parkour course, um, themed after the Eva mod. I haven't played it myself, but I looked at a few screenshots, a few videos, so I have a pretty good idea of what it would look like. I have this temple. The outside and the clouds and the floating islands and this those geometric shapes and spirals and a little bit abstract on the inside. Let's give it a quick fly around. I, I turned on the beacons for mining diamonds so they are back on again. But here we have the floating islands, some clouds, a temple, let me get a better view, temple and a rainbow bridge. I've um, That's my best time, 5 minute 20. If you download the map, there will be a download link in the description. You can try to beat it, you probably can, I'm really not good at parkour. Return. You can take another staircase to reach the Guy Lobby, which is essentially the pinnacle of the tower for now. This is the Guy Lobby. The, the room is essentially made to switch from one set of elevators to another set of elevators. The old elevators end here, so this one is the one that leads to the Sky Lobby. That one leads, well, to the, to the smelting area. area. Oops. This one leads to the Crystal Cave and this one leads to the farm control room I showed you before. That one leads all the way to the basement, so if we jump down there we would get all the way down. I will do this soon. This is the new set of elevators, which will lead to the next 500 blocks of the tower. My goal will be eventually to construct a tower that is 1000 blocks tall. I've already reached the halfway point, which is this, this beautiful sky lobby we have. Those um, sandstorm columns on the side, we have a lot of vegetation and I used black concrete, black glass and end rods to give it a look of a night sky at the ceiling and in the center is a column with a glow squid inside. Moving that up here was really difficult, it took a long time. So, I can take the stairs to the top but there is nothing there, just one moment. This is the top here. I will continue building in the next episode. I'm not really sure when it will come out, but probably one or two weeks after this world tour. Let's return to the sky lobby and take the elevator down to the basement. We're back at the basement and I can show you the last part of the world tour, which is the nether. Yeah, well, the nether hub is behind me, but I will show you this first. This rail system was essentially used to move all the mobs into the tower. I have also a pick here and a magma cube and a horse, once I have enclosures for those. This is one of the meta net many nether portals I use. They are all a little bit decorated to show where they lead. This one leads to the plains biome directly next to my tower. There's another nether portal up here, which will lead to a snow. No, this is the mountain biome. The snow biome is somewhere else. I think it's back here. Yeah, that's the snow biome. 
I fused up all my rockets. I'm back at the nether hub and this is it. It's themed in the Netherlands and this is also the area where I do all the villager trading. I have I have a lot of three or four story buildings and in the ground floor I have essentially shops for all the villagers. And it's this Dutch theme. Here we have the librarians. This is basically the one of the larger shops because in a lot of librarians here we have masons. There's one on the outside. Or in the inside, I have also another building with masons because I needed a lot of quartz at some point. Here we have 10 farmers and there we have 4 clerics. If I go here around the corner, here's the larger shop <coughs> that houses all the other masons. They let me let me show it to you. They trade one emerald for one block of quartz, and this is essentially a trade I use quite a lot because quartz is otherwise really difficult to collect. If we go here, we see some fields with tulips, some gardens, here we have some greenhouses. If I wanted to, I could harvest those melons and pumpkins and sell them for emeralds with the farmers. They, they are all converted from zombies into villagers. So they will give me one emerald per pumpkin. Here I have the butcher. Here I have those fletchers. I, they, I think they can trade, if you're lucky, yes they can trade you enchanted arrows. But there's... If I wanted all enchanted arrows I would have to try a lot of fletchers and I haven't done that at the moment. We have the leather worker and if we... Continue on the street, you have the cartographers, the various kinds of smiths here, here and here. And at the end I have the fish salesman. You're probably wondering why it has this winter aesthetic. Well, two reasons. First I wanted the canals and well you can't have water in the nether so I used ice. And secondly, the carpet and the snow prevents magma cubes and gas from spawning. And this is actually really important. Because otherwise uh, it would be a pretty chaotic nether hub. There's one more thing I can show you which is the... What is it called? The, the bartering area for the Micklin. Put in gold here, you press that button and it barters automatically and all the items get sorted into those chests. Oh, spectral arrows. Those, those are pretty useful sometimes. Also, blackstone pretty useful, gravel pretty useful, so sand pretty useful. Most of them are pretty useful block. Um, at the end, there's a system that fills it all. I used to fill everything that isn't sorted into this chest here, but after a while, I added a mechanism that essentially just burns everything that don't doesn't get sorted in. Because I had enough low speed and I had enough fire resistance. There are a few more things I could show you. There are a handful of farms outside of the tower, like the, the Guardian farm or Gold farm. There's also a mob switch, but nothing groundbreaking. But one thing I want to show you is the mining desert. To, just to show you how much sand and sandstone was actually needed to build the tower. If we, if we go in here go down here, I have this massive emptied out desert where I got all the sand for the concrete and the glass. And down here I also have essentially carved out this mountain to get sandstone. Let's return to the main base. This this, uh, this building here is actually inspired by a train station in the Netherlands, in Den Haag, I think. And inside is also the area where I converted all the villagers. They, they drop down here from a villager reader on top. I press this button to get a minecart. It collects one villager, it gets converted into a zombie. And I then can use potions of weakness, which I brew here, and golden apples to... Well, the zombie doesn't attack it because it recognizes me, but if I go further away it should attack the villager. Yes, it does. But once the villager is converted, I can 
into a zombie I can convert it back into a villager, I can repeat it step a few times and then I can put it on those rails here for waiting and once I have a purpose for the villager I can send it there. So that was the entirety of the nether. Now I can return to the main base. That was the world tour. I showed you everything. I showed you the garden, tower itself, the exterior as well as the interior. And the nether, there's nothing in the end at the moment. Maybe I will build something there later, although I honestly, I think I'm busy enough with the tower. But as always, if you have a question or a suggestion, then leave a comment. And if you want to see how this, my journey with this tower continues, then feel free to subscribe. Have a beautiful evening and goodbye.